Good evening, hoodies. Welcome back to the Hood Table one more again for another The Hood Table podcast with your girl, Tanya. Please come on in, like the video, share the video, and subscribe to The Hood Table if you are not already dis- already subscribed. Now, this evening, we are going to be discussing uh, what we have found out during the R. Kelly trial on this day, Monday, September 13th, 2021, which I believe is actually day 14 or 15 of the trial. Either way, either way, we're going to discuss what we found out today on, again, September 13th, 2021. So again, please uh, like the video and share the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already subscribed. Now, today, uh, we heard from uh, several accusers again, uh, one of which said she um, witnessed R. Kelly sexually abusing Aaliyah at the age of 13 or 14. Now, as we all know, R. Kelly... Um, the monster, as some people refer to him as, is facing a multitude of charges from sex trafficking to forced labor and violations of the Man Act, racketeering, sexual exploitation of children, and kidnapping. Allegedly, the singer for years would entice girls, boys, and young women before dominating and controlling them physically, sexually, and psychologically. And today, we are going to go over what we have come to find out from today's trial. Now, let allow me to start off by saying that I have stated many times that I believe R. Kelly started sleeping with Aaliyah soon after he met her through her uncle. And in court today, the jury heard from Angela, the 10th accuser, who claims that the singer allegedly started sexually abusing Aaliyah when she was around 13 years old. This was two years before he had illegally gotten married to Aaliyah. What the accuser testified to was that she witnessed R. Kelly perform oral sex on Aaliyah either in 92 or 93. That would make Aaliyah around the age of 13 or 14. And whether she was 13 or 14, she was still a minor. R. Kelly was 27 years old when he married Aaliyah. Therefore, he would have had to have been 24 or 25 years old when he started having sex with her. Now, if I recall correctly, on the Lifetime Surviving R. Kelly series, it was said by one of the accusers that R. Kelly was caught having sex with Aaliyah on his tour bus when she was really young. So this accuser, Angela, stated in court that she, along with several underage girls, including Aaliyah, were all sexually abused by Kelly. Angela had met Kelly in 91 when she was 15 years old through another friend named Tiffany. Tiffany had taken Angela to the singer's apartment in Chicago, where they were also where there were also other young girls present. There at his apartment, during which a party was taking place, each of the girls were called into a room to join Kelly for sex. When Angela was summoned to the room, the singer asked her to climb on top of him to have sex with him without offering her a condom. But thanks to Angela having a condom herself, she was able to protect herself at that time. While Angela was straddling him, the singer was touching the breast of another young woman. During the sexual escapade, he was also kissing on another young girl at the same time. After the night of the party, both Angela and her friend Tiffany was invited back to spend time with the singer. At that time, Angela, she said she was about 14 or 15 years old herself when Kelly had started having sex with her the first night they met. Later, Angela actually spent a lot of time with R. Kelly almost on a daily basis. While she was still a minor, the singer continued to have sex with her. But eventually, R. Kelly gave her an ultimatum. She was either to finish high school, or she was going to drop out of school to pursue her musical career with him. Although Angela was an aspiring singer, Kelly made her a backup dancer. Even though she used to be part of a girl singing group by the name of Second Chapter, R. Kelly gave her a dancing opportunity versus a singing career. While being a backup dancer to the singer, Angela met Aaliyah through him. At the time she met the up-and-coming singer, it was about 92 when Aaliyah was around 13 years old. R. Kelly had described Aaliyah to Angela as the next up-and-coming artist, the next hottest wave from out of Detroit. And that Angela 
was going to also become a backup singer or backup dancer for the up-and-coming artist. The first time Angela witnessed R. Kelly sexually abusing Aaliyah was again in 92 or 93. Angela, Kelly, Aaliyah, and Kelly's entourage were all on his tour bus. And at one point, while goofing around with other girls on the bus, Angela attempted to play a prank on Kelly. When she opened his door so that they could pour water on him, she spotted R. Kelly's face in between Aaliyah's legs. He was obviously performing, performing oral sex on the young teenager. Angela claims to not have ever spoken to R. Kelly about that incident or what she had witnessed. She did, however, stop working for him in the mid-90s. But regarding any abuse from R. Kelly, Angela also, um, during her testimony, recalled how, recalled how R. Kelly would punish them with sex. If the girls did not follow one of his rules, he would subject them all to having sex with him. Mm. To a certain degree... Angela claims that having sex with Kelly was mandatory. On one occasion, on a stop in Washington, D.C., Angela described how she, Aaliyah, and other girls had left the hotel to get something to eat without his permission. Without him knowing, they had slipped off to a nearby 7-Eleven convenience store to get something to eat. After finding out what they all had did, Kelly told them that we would all have to put out that night. It was dues time, said Angela. Evidently, from what we have heard throughout his 30-year-plus career, he had a very healthy sexual appetite. But too bad internally, he wasn't that healthy, being that he kept giving people the herpes virus. Mm -hmm. Anyway, moving right along. Another witness took to the stand today to testify against R. Kelly. The witness, Diana Copeland, admitted to not witnessing the singer's abuse, um, the singer abused, sexually assault, or kidnap anyone. What he did do, however, was force her to write false confessions. We have already heard how the singer allegedly would force people to write false letters to their loved ones about them beating on themselves and other things, when in all reality, the singer was the one spanking them when they so-called got out of line. Under oath today, Diana Copeland recalled how R. Kelly had very strict rules that were to be followed. She was actually his longtime assistant. From what she stated in court, the singer at times was very cautious, maybe to the point of even being paranoid, which is totally understandable from everything that he is alleged to have done over the years. As the other witness, Angela, stated today, Copeland said that Kelly would get pretty upset at times, to the point that over the 15 years she's worked for him, Kelly has made her cry several times. Upon other things, the singer was also extremely paranoid that he even had her, Copeland, disrobe to prove she's not wearing a wire. But despite him being so cautious with people trying to set him up, he was not in the loop whatsoever when it came to his books. And we've all heard over the years how R. Kelly was not too bright, allegedly, upstairs. Uh, when it came to being book smart or handling his financial business, he was an awesome musician. I'd even call him the Mozart of American R&B music, songwriting, and recording. But in spite of him uh, being an amazing artist per Diana, he was in the dark when it came to his bank account and musical royalties. Diana also claims that the singer had no idea what his own social security number was. Now, how many people do you know in their 20s or 30s that don't know their social security number? Regardless, this and his many alleged payoffs to accusers or family of accusers would have had to contribute to why he's totally broke right now. And on that note, please again make sure you like and share the video, subscribe to the hood table if you're not already, and please make sure you follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, IG, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, and of course our own The Hood Table website where you can purchase our The Hood Table merchandise and sign up for our monthly newsletters. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed my little review. 
uh, the R. Kelly trial from day, I believe it's 15, 14 or 15, um, September 13, 2021. Uh, again, please like and share the video. Stay safe, be blessed, remain vigilant at all times, and always remember to keep it hood. Bye.